Hello everyone. I wanted to do a full moon video on intentions and this week has been <laughs> very difficult. Busy and sicknesses and so I'm a little bit off on the day but I have been working with my guides and using my time of resting to kind of connect in and the thing being our theme this month with intention that has really worked with me in many regards is what do you really want? And as we're setting intentions, it's so easy to think of um, what, you know, all the things like the material things that we want. I, I want a car. I want a house. I want this. I want that. I want that. Want, 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 want. But that's not really what we want. Does that make sense? So in terms of setting intention and my guides are saying that it is important to be clear on what we want not necessarily on um the hows or things like that but you know to you know to be clear on what the core is does that make sense yeah <sighs> this is turning into a transmission i can feel my guide stepping in which is good We as human beings are often out of balance. We are constantly struggling with manifesting and with creation because we're not in alignment with who we are and we're not in alignment with what we really want. Because when, when, when we're in true alignment with what we want, it's amazing how fast it aligns and manifests into the physical world with us. So if you're having a hard time manifesting and something's out of alignment and chances are it's the core message of what you're trying to manifest and the why behind it. Um, I often get the, I've heard the metaphor of throwing spaghetti at a wall, right? So you know, we, we want, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want this, and, you know, we, th and it all makes sense in this big jumble because it's our wall of spaghetti and it all makes sense. But we need to start, you know, sorting out the spaghetti. We need to start figuring out what we truly want. And I've recently been um, working on a, a, a class with my mentor, um, Shakti Botazzi, and one of the core messages in this class is about the alignment of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And, and it kind of hit me. I said, oh, that makes sense. In terms of intention, we are often not really in harmony with our divine masculine and our divine feminine. So then we can't quite bring down what we want from the divine feminine and manifest it with the divine masculine. And the very first day that we were with Brittany, we came up with that intention for this month, which was uh, taking divinely guided action steps. Mm. And that's a harmony between divine masculine and divine feminine. So I remember when I would first move to New York, I was very much so in the divine masculine. I was very much so, you know, being the, the, the bull, you know, like I will force this reality upon the world. I will do all of these things. And I, you know, I was very, uh, forceful and I was manifesting, but it was very much so by what I wanted. And I had the 10 year vision plans and I was doing all of that very divine masculine work. And I wouldn't let anyone distract me. I wouldn't, you know, for, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play. I, I was very serious. I was like, no, 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 this is my career. This is what I want. And then I wanted to get pregnant and I shifted completely into the divine feminine. I don't care. Everything's fine. I'm here to flow with the earth. I was, you know, completely creative in terms of, you know, cooking meals. And, you know, I just was completely creating this nesting, this home. And I'm kind of looking at it and I'm seeing, well, that was 10 years of the divine masculine of just forceful, this is what I want. And then when I realized that that wasn't necessarily what I wanted, I just gave it up and I just walked away. And instead I was in this creation mode of 
pulling down the intuition and, you know, creating and nurturing. And now my body is trying to find this harmony, this balance with the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So that way I can take intuitively guided messages and manifest them, take the action steps that I need to manifest them. And that's really where the harmony is. It's taking the energy down from source and then taking the action steps that we need. And I've been realizing that I've been missing so many of the action steps because I am very intuitive and I'm very much so connected to my mother nature right now. But my guides are saying, okay, we need a little bit of that Leo. We need a little bit of that fire coming back to manifest, to take divinely guided action steps to manifest it. But then once I realized that, I realized well, I don't know what I really want. Because what is it that I really want? Do I want uh, a thousand followers? Do I want to be a guru? Do I want to be famous? Do I? What do I want? And Realistically, I don't really want any of those things. If they're a byproduct, I guess I'm not going to say no. But it's really about what do I want? What are my pillars? And what are my four pillars? What are the, the things that matter most to me? And how do I take action steps to make sure that my life is always grounded in those four pillars, the, the four walls, the foundation of who I am. And for me, that's family, faith, foundation, which is like security and safety, home, hearth. That's very important. And then the other side of that is freedom and flow and creativity. So I almost have these two different sides that are so much um so separate in so many regards. Like I've got security and foundation, which is my Taurus rising. And I've got my freedom and flexibility, which is my Gemini moon, you know? So I've got, and then I've got my, my, my fire with my Leo. So I need to figure out how to take all of this and create the intention into alignment. So right now we are in a January full moon in Leo and I am a Leo. And so I have been feeling this very emotionally in terms of um, love and relationships and um, wanting to be loved and wanting to be express my love and wanting to be and feel beautiful, that kind of Venetian energy. And so uh, I've been just kind of just journaling. I've filled up an entire notebook just of journaling of what do I want? What do I not want? You know, just kind of letting anything that comes in out through me. And I have figured out more and more of what I don't want, which is actually a beautiful gift. I don't want these things. I don't want to focus on them. I don't want to manifest them. I don't, I don't need those for my happiness. In a lot of ways, I love my life right now as it is. I would just like to yes and it with some more information, with some, with some, some more bounty, with some adventure, you know, with, with all of those things. And so I need to take action steps to do that. And so recently I've been, okay, I want to travel. I need a passport and I'm taking the steps to, to get that. I want to, uh, do more workshops in creative arts and teaching artists. So I've got to go to my networks that I know that I have creative ground and arts alive and other places that I know are networking places. And I've been reaching out and saying, okay, what can I do? How can I get involved? You know, that takes action steps. I can't just keep expecting things to flow to me. And I'm very lucky because things often do flow to me. And then you know, and then I can just sit there in my very passive, you know, motherly state and be like, oh, I received that and I'm so happy for that and thank you. But more and more, it's the divinely guided action steps that I am needing right now. And you want to think about where you are right now and where you've been. Maybe you are in a very um, masculine place of life. Maybe you're a single mom and you're having to provide for your family and you have to do what you need to do to survive, right? Does that, so you need that fire, right? Um, we have in book coming in with uh, February 2nd, which is 
you know, Bridget, the goddess, is fire and water. You know, she as a goddess knows that there is the fire to manifest and there is the water to flow. And so we need both of these things. And so we need to kind of pull that energy in to ourselves. And so for our full moon in Leo guided meditation, let's just take a second, you know, grab a, grab a little notebook or something and just take a moment to right now, just write down or say out loud an intention. Like, I want this. And we're going to look at that in the etheric realms. And we're going to see if that's really what you want. And we're going to try to see if we can help you manifest that, figure out the action steps that you need to create that. Bridget is coming in. I also have the Venetians coming in from Venus. Um, I have some of my Lyran brothers and sisters stepping in for this guided meditation. So this is probably going to be a short meditation. Uh, it's really just more about the journaling aspect in terms of connecting, but you can replay and re-listen to this. So take a pause, shut off the video, write your intention, ground your energy, unpause and come back. Okay, so now here we are. Thanking our guides for being here in this circle. We are casting the energy of the circle and calling in our guides into this sacred space and this sacred moment for the sacred full moon in Leo for the month of January guided meditation. We're setting the intention of harmonizing and balancing the divine masculine and the divine feminine and opening us up to the creative beauty of allowing the wisdom of spirit to come through us and the beautiful fire and passion to take the action steps we need to create. Thank you to the energies of South Fire, energy creation. Thank you for the divine masculine energy, for the Leo energy of being able to manifest, to shine right, to shine beautifully, to shine bright. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to the energy of the West, water with the sacred wells and the wisdom within us, allowing ourselves to be able to flow with the moment and flow with the creativity and to be able to receive those divinely guided information so that way we can take the action steps needed. Thank you to North, which is right action and harmony and balance. Thank you to the Earth, Mother Gaia, Pachamama, who grounds us into the energy of this Earth and the wisdom that we are here in this body, in this physical flesh, to be able to find harmony and alignment with who we are and where we are going. Thank you to the energy of East, which is about the inspiration, the great eagle who flies above and shows us the perspective from the highest perspective to be able to see what we clearly and really and truly want from a divine blueprint perspective. There's, in terms of manifestation, there's the use, the desire, and the appetite. And we have to be careful that the appetite is not, the desire is not materialism. It's not selfish. We want to make sure that our wants, our needs are, are for the highest good of all, for all concerned, that we are doing this in alignment with source, with light, with divine. And Great Eagle is coming in to show us the mountaintop perspective of being able to see who we are and where we are and where we want to go. Thank you <clears throat> to Mother Earth and to Father Sky. Thank you to all of our galactic family who comes into this circle, the Venetians, who know beauty, who know how wonderful it is to accept and receive and live in a state of beauty and love. And thank you to our Lyran families 
are also coming in to remind us of the connection to home and hearth and being allowing us to remember that we are intuitive beings, we are trusting, but we also need to be grounded and alert so that way we know where to pounce like the jaguar, know where to go, know where know the direction we are heading to watch what we want and then go and take the right action at the right time. Thank you, Bridget, who is coming in. Goddess Bridget, who's a triple goddess. She is with us for all stages of our life. Thank you to Oshun, who is coming in. And Oshun loves this beauty and sparkle, and she loves the magic and beauty of life. Ostara is also coming in, um, which is so beautiful because she is many ways the honor of where we are creating this sacred circle and this collective Ostara. Yes, allow yourself to feel in balance and harmony and flow. Allow your body to move. Often in your life you are running, 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 or still, still, still. What if you flow with the flowing of life? What if you allow your bodies to move for your spines to dance and your hips to move and glide? What if you allow yourself to connect into the Shakti, to the divine feminine energy within you, allowing it to move you, allowing it to wake you up? As you are part of this Ostara collective, you are setting the first month's intention on intention. How beautiful. Wanting what you want and knowing what you want and how to create it. How beautiful, dear ones. We are here sending blessings for you. Take a moment to see a field that is green. Beautiful and green. And see what you want on a hilltop as a temple and feel yourself walking, taking the divinely guided action steps. Now you see this is a field. You can get there any number of ways. You can run that way and you can run this way or you could take one divinely guided step after another and move towards your location. You do not need to know all of the steps and all of the path that is before you. You just need to know one step and then the next. And that is the way it is with manifesting, allowing yourself to simply be at ease with the one next best step. Oftentimes, you want to create plans and visions and be able to allot your time worth 252 to 255. I will do this. That is productivity. But productivity is the worker ant. It is the worker bee. But what if you can move out of worker bee and out of worker ant into queen bee, into queen ant? What if you can be taking divinely guided action steps one at a time, not knowing per se the path or the way in which you will go. Will it be left? Will it be right? Will it be straight ahead? Just knowing this one step is here. This next step, here. Allowing yourself to allow the unfolding of it, dear ones. The unfolding is so very, very important. And so we are asking you to trust. To not necessarily need to know the hows, the whys, and the whatnots. And see yourself in this meditation taking step after step. And feel your hips just moving slightly as you would when you are walking. One step and another and another and another. And each morning we are asking you to wake up and say, what divinely guided action step can I take today to get me closer to my goal? And if you think about that, for 365 days, one day, one year from now, 
one year from now, you will be in a completely different state if you take one action step each day. Just one, dear ones. Now, certain days you might get more than one action step. And you can do them as they come to you. For it will unfold for you. But each day, just ask for one step, and that step will be given to you. And if you do that, dear ones, we promise that the unfolding will come, and you will reach your destination. At any time, you are welcome to return to this field, and to be here, to remember that it is one step at a time. We are the Ostara Collective, and we are so happy to be with you. We are leaving this moment with you, beloveds, allowing you to come back into space and time and celebrate this beautiful message of intention at this beautiful full moon sacred time. Blessings be to you. We love you. We honor you. Whew. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're closing that circle and closing that energy. Allow yourself to just move and shake it out. Drink some water. I really recommend journaling right now. And, you know, maybe if you're an artistic person, I know I had the vision in my mind of that little temple that I'm going to walk towards. I'm going to draw that and kind of put that on my, my room for something to remind myself that I'm walking towards that. And just remember your, your,